Hello and good morning again. My name is Michael and we're continuing in the reading of the Word of God. Uh, and yesterday we stopped just roughly, or roughly before, roughly, just roughly before the start of chapter 22, the end of chapter 21, in verse 33 of chapter 21. Um, if you were watching the video yesterday, I showed why I did this. Um, it's because it starts with a new segment of it, but it kind of has about three verses that remain from chapter 21 before it goes to chapter 22, but they coincide together. Um, so that way there's no confusion or we don't get broken off from one part. I just decided to cut off um, at verse 33. Um, so we'll be continuing into there. We just learned of the Ten Commandments that God had given to Moses to give to the people of Israel following a numerous amount of laws that they're to adhere by. Um, and we're going to continue to read into those laws and how man should be treating one another at this, at this particular point in time. Um, and I think a lot of that, partially, is because God knows man's heart. Um, he knows in our fallen state, in our wicked state, that without some type of governing control, that we just go chaotic. And this is so true because you can see that more so now in our generation than a lot of times before. Granted, yeah, there may not be maybe... No, 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 the world's getting pretty wicked. Um... But that's okay because that was also foretold. So Han, um, going to the book of Daniel, tells that, and I believe it's in chapter 9, um, where Gabriel comes and talks to uh, Daniel about future times, about the leading up to the Messiah. And then you go into Romans um, and Second Timothy and the New Testament. And gets told a lot in regards to how we are, when how, how people will be in the end times at the end at the end of the age. And as you read that, it's just so hard not to sit there and be like, "That's like definitely how it is today." And it's been growing, and it's been getting more and more and more. Just like it was told, just like in the end time, it'll start out like birthing pains, subtle at first, but ever increasing more and more with more intensity. And you can certainly see that in our world, how we treat one another, how we are with one another, how ungodly so much of the world is, and how unrepentant and just absolute, just defiance. Um, they just don't want to hear it. Like they don't care to hear it. They, they, they think that they're in total control of their lives when in reality they really are not. And if they just be able to surrender and give their lives over to Christ, that things will be worked out better for them. But people are ignorant in their ways and they're stubborn in their ways. And so there will be going to be a lot of people that are stuck here during the tribulation time. But don't want to get too far aside from myself, um, so we're going to go ahead and continue into verse 33 of chapter 21 leading into chapter 22. This is about laws, of, laws about restitution. So beginning at verse 33, when a man opens a pit or when a man digs a pit and does not cover it and an ox or donkey fall into it, the owner of the pit shall make restoration. He shall give money to its owner at the dead and the dead beast shall be his. When one man's ox butts another so that it dies, then they shall sell the live ox and share its price, <clears throat> and the dead beast also they shall share. Or if it is known that the ox has been accustomed to gore in the past and its owner has not kept, in it, kept it in, he shall repay ox for ox, and the dead beast shall be his. Beginning of chapter 22. This is why I broke him up the reading yesterday. And if a man steals an ox or a sheep and kills it or sells it, he shall repay five oxen for an ox and four sheep for a sheep. If the thief is found breaking in and is struck so that he dies, there shall be no blood guilt for him. But if the sun has risen on him, there shall be 
blood guilt for him. He shall surely pay if he has nothing, then he shall be sold for its for his theft. If the stolen beast is found alive in his possession, whether it is an ox or a donkey or a sheep, he shall pay double. If a man causes a field or vineyard to be grazed over, or lets its beast loose and it feeds in another man's field, he shall make restitution from the best in his own field and in his own vineyard. If fire breaks out and catches in thorns, so that the stacked grain or the standard grain or the field is consumed, he who started the fire shall make full restu restitution. If a man gives to his neighbor money or goods to keep safe and it is stolen from the man's house, then it if then if the thief is found, he shall pay double. If the thief is not found, the owner of the house shall come near to God to show whether or not he has put his hand to his neighbor's property. For every breach of trust, whether it is for an ox, for a donkey, or for a sheep, or for a cloak, or any other, or for any kind of lost thing, of which one says, this is it, the case of both parties shall come before God. The one whom God condemns shall pay double to his neighbor. If a man gives to his neighbor a donkey, or an ox, or a sheep, or any beast to keep safe, and it dies, or is injured, or is driven away, Without anyone seeing it, an oath by the Lord shall be between them both to see whether or not he has put his hand to his neighbor's property. The owner shall accept the oath, and he shall not make restitution. But if it is stolen from him, he shall make restitution to its owner. If it is torn by the beast, let him bring it as evidence. He shall not make restitution for what has been torn. If a man borrows anything of his neighbor and it is injured or dies, the owner not being with it, he shall make full the restitution. If the owner was with it, he shall not make restitution. If it was hired, it came for its hiring fee. In verse 16, laws about social justice. If a man seduces a virgin who is not betrothed and lies with her, he shall give the bride price for her and make her his wife. If her father utterly refuses to give her to him, he shall pay money equal to the bride price for virgins. He shall not permit a sorceress to live. Whoever lies with an animal shall be put to death. Whoever sacrifices to any god other than the Lord alone shall be devoted to destruction. You shall not wrong a sojourner or oppress him, for you were sojourners in the land of Egypt. You shall not mistreat any widow or fatherless child. If you do mistreat them and they cry out to me, I will surely hear their cry, and my wrath will burn, and I will kill you with the sword, and your wives will be, shall become widows and your children fatherless. If you lend money to any of my people with who you with you who is poor, you shall not be like a, mo a money lender to him, and you shall not exact interest from him. If ever you take your neighbor's cloak and pledge, you shall return it to him before the sun goes down, for that is his only covering, and it is his cloak for his body. And what else shall he sleep? And if he cries to me, I will hear, for I am compassionate. You shall not revile God, or curse a ruler of your people. You shall not delay to offer from the fullness of your harvest and from the outflow of your presses. The firstborn of your sons shall give to me. You shall do the same with your oxen and with your sheep. Seven days it shall be with its mother. On the eighth day you shall give it to me. You shall be consecrated to me. Therefore you shall not eat any flesh that is torn by beasts in the field. You shall throw it to the dogs. And see here it goes again, cutting into chapter 23 of the same um, laws of, sorry, of justice, of social justice. You shall not spread a false report. You shall not join hands with a wicked man to be a malicious witness. You shall not fall in with the, the many to do evil, nor shall you bear witness in a lawsuit, siding with the many so as to pervert justice. Nor shall you be partial to a man in his lawsuit. If you meet your enemy's ox or his donkey goes astray, you shall bring it back to him. If you see the donkey of one who hates you lying down under its burden, you shall refrain from leaving him with it. You shall rescue it with him. You shall not pervert the justice due to your poor in his lawsuit. Keep far from false charge, and do not kill the innocent and righteous, for I will not acquit the wicked. And you shall take no bribe, bribe, for a bride blinds the clear-sighted and subverts the cause of those who are in the right. You shall not oppress a sojourner. You know the heart of a sojourner, for you were sojourner, 
sojourners in the land of Egypt. In verse 10, laws about the Sabbath and festivals. For six years you shall sow your land and gather in its field, but the seventh year you shall let it rest and lie fallow, that the poor of your people may eat and may and what they believe the beasts of the field may eat. You shall do likewise with your vineyard and with your olive orchard. Six days you shall do your work, but on the seventh day you shall rest, that your ox and your donkey may have rest, and the son of your servant woman and the alien may be refreshed. Pay attention to all that I have said to you, and make no mention of the names of other gods, nor let it be heard on your lips. Three times in the year you shall keep a feast to me, you shall keep the feast of unleavened bread, as I commanded you. You shall eat unle you shall eat unleavened bread for seven days at the appointed time in the month of the Abib. For in it you, to you came out of Egypt. None shall appear before me empty-handed. You shall keep the feast of harvest of the first fruits of your labor of what you sow in the field. You shall keep the, the feast of the ingathering at the end of the year. When you gather in from the field of the fruit of your, of your labor, three times in the year shall all your males appear before the Lord God. You shall not offer the blood of my sacrifice with anything leavened, or let the fat of my feast remain until the morning. The beast of the first fruits of your ground you shall bring into the house of the Lord your God, and you shall not boil a young goat in its mother's milk. Verse 20, Conquest of Canaan Promised Behold, I send an angel before you to guard you on the way and bring you to a place that I have prepared. Pay careful attention to him and obey his voice. Do not rebel against him, for he will not pardon your transgressions, for my name is in him. <clears throat> but if you carefully obey his voice, <clears throat> excuse me, but if you carefully obey his voice and do all that I say, then I will be an enemy to your enemies and an adversary to your adversaries. When my angel goes before you and brings you to the Amorites and the Hittites and the Perizzites and the Canaanites, the Hivites and the Jebusites, and I blot them out, you shall not bow down to their gods, nor serve them, nor do as they do, but you shall utterly overthrow them and break their pillars in pieces. You shall serve the Lord your God, and he will bless your bread and your water, and I will take, I will take sickness away from among you. None shall miscarry or be barren in your land. I will fulfill the number of your days. I will send my terror before you and will throw into confusion all the people against whom shall come, and I will make all your enemies turn their backs to you. And I will send hornets before you, which shall drive out the Hivites, the Canaanites, and the Hittites from before you. I will not drive them out from before you in one year, lest the land become desolate and the wild beasts multiply against you. Little by little I will drive them out from before you until you have increased and possessed the land. And I will set your border from the Red Sea to the Sea of the Philistines, and from the wilderness to the Euphrates. For I will give you the inhabitants of the land into your hand, and you shall drive them out before you. You shall make no covenant with them and their gods. They shall not dwell in your land, lest you make your sin against me. For if you serve their gods, it will surely be a snare to you. In chapter 24, which will be our final chapter that we read this morning, the covenant confirmed. Then he said to Moses, Come up to the Lord, you and Aaron, Nadab and Abihu, the seventy of the elders, and seventy of the elders of Israel, and worship from afar. Moses alone shall come near to the Lord, but the others shall not come near, and the people shall not come up with him. Moses came and told the people all the words of the Lord and all the rules. And all the people answered with one voice and said, All the words that the Lord has spoken we will do. And Moses wrote down all the words of the Lord. He rose early in the morning and built an altar at the foot of the mountain, and twelve pillars according to the twelve tribes of Israel. And he set young men of the people of Israel who offered burnt offerings and sacrificed peace offerings of oxen to the Lord. And Moses took half of the blood and put it in basins, and half of the blood he threw against the altar. Then he took the book of the covenant and read it in the hearing of the people. And they said, All that the Lord has spoken we will do, and we will be obedient. And Moses took the blood and threw it on the people and said, Behold, the blood of the covenant that the Lord has made with you in accordance with all these words. Then Moses and Aaron, Nadab and Abihu, and the seventy of the elders of Israel went up, and they saw the God of Israel. There was under his feet as it were a permanent 
a pavement of sapphire stone, like the heavy, like the very heaven for clearness. And he did not lay his hand on the chief men of the people of Israel. They beheld God and ate and drank. The Lord said to Moses, Come up to me on the mountain and wait there, that I may give you the tablets of stone with the law and the commandment, which I have, give, which I have written for their instruction. So Moses rose with his assistant Joshua, and Moses went up into the mountains of God, the mountain of God. And he said to the elders, Wait here for us until we return to you. And behold, Aaron and Hur are with you. Whoever has a dispute, let him go to them. Then Moses went up on the mountain, and the cloud covered the mountain. The glory of the Lord dwelt on Mount Sinai, and the cloud covered it six days. And on the seventh day he called to Moses out of the midst of the cloud. Now the appearance of the glory of the Lord was like a devouring fire on the top of the mountain. In the sight of the people of Israel, Moses entered the cloud and went up on the mountain. And Moses was on the mountain forty days and forty nights. So we're going to go ahead and stop there and continue our reading tomorrow. Um, as you'll, if you know the story, you'll understand um, that he was gone 40 days and 40 nights. And in that time, the Israelites grew restless. And it was not a good thing. Like They just made a vow to God to obey and be obedient in all of his words. And as we'll read and continue reading on you'll see that they have just quickly turned around. And it has been that way since then. You'll have generations of Israelites that commend to, that, that truly put all of themselves into God, and then you'll have the next generation being completely disobedient to Him and not acknowledging Him at all. But I do want to thank you for listening and reading with me. Um, go back and restudy with this. This is a lot of the stuff that our Jewish brothers and sisters are still to this day adhering to, not saying that God's law has been taken away, for Jesus did not come to put away the law, but to fulfill the law. Um, so go back and study and reread and go to the New Testament and see the likeness and the connection between the two. Um, I do thank you again. I love you all. God bless you, and I will see you tomorrow.